Hey everyone, welcome back to the Valencia Career Mode. It's season one, episode nine, and you will remember we won against Barcelona in the last episode, and it wasn't just a win, it was an amazing performance from our players. We outpassed Barcelona, we outpossessed them, and this is the team that is known for that, and it was such a good performance, especially in the first 30 minutes. But just throughout the entire game, we kept good, sustained possession. We even had spells at the end of that game where we just dominated possession. It was so good to see. We created a number of opportunities, and everyone was on point. Everyone was in tune, and that is the most impressive part. Moriba comes in against his old club, his parent club, and he does just so well. No misplaced passes. Guilamon was just outstanding. This guy has become indispensable at that CDM position. Look at all these passes. He was just an orchestrator in the midfield. And we need to build on this. And we need to get another one of these performances. But I feel that everything is coming together slowly. We have an interesting episode coming up. Our first game is against Mallorca. And then we're going to have, as you can see, games against Granada, Getafe and Elche. So I think all winnable games. And if we can just get some momentum, I mean, we're already coming off of this really good Barcelona win. If we can just get a little bit of steam going here, we can climb up the table. We're not in a bad position. We're in seventh, tied for sixth. So we're knocking on the door of these European competitions, which is our goal for this season, guys. But we have to focus one game at a time. Mallorca is up next. We did a very good job last time playing against them, specifically offensively. We scored a number of goals, but then in the second half, I remember we let it slip a little bit. They played a little bit more direct and it caused us some trouble. And that makes sense because the way they set up is they drop back and they're going to let us have possession. So we are going to feel comfortable and that's when we can really build the momentum. But we do have to watch out for the counters. They did hurt us last time. They're set up to do this perfectly. You've got Angel running in behind. You've got Lee free roaming a little bit, getting on the ball and he can really be dangerous. Then you've got an asymmetrical setup. Kubo on the right hand side is going to cut inside, let Maffeo just rampage on that right-hand side, bombing forward as the fullback. The left-hand side is a little bit more reserved in terms of the fullback, and Ndiaye is staying wide as he's very pacey, and he's going to hug that touchline, and he's going to dribble past our opponents. Again, they have some very interesting players. Ndiaye is lightning fast. Lee has a lot of technical ability. He was once a Valencia player, so we know all about him. And we're just going to have to deal with it. I am rotating regularly, guys, in the front four. Guiri on the left-hand side this time. Marcos Antonio on the right. But there is going to be a lot of rotation as I'm trying to figure out who should be playing as part of the best starting 11. Other than that, it is a very familiar lineup. And we're going to try to build on this result, like I said, and get three points here against Mallorca. I realize that we have a tendency in this career mode to start off games really well, even score early goals, but then drop off. And I thought that was going to repeat itself in this game. We got a really good early shot. It was saved and then Mallorca went on the counter. Now, to be fair, we have done really well defensively over the last little while and we continue to do that here. An interception and now we're back on the front foot. We have our chance. We move it out wide and crucially back into the center quickly. This created space and a golden opportunity for De Kettler. He takes guys 1-0. And that's a great start, but I have expected us to now drop off because like I said, it has been happening a lot, but not this game, guys. It really was just an amazing performance and everyone was in tune on the same wavelength. The Kettler was getting a lot of the balls in the box. He was getting a number of chances and we recycled play. We didn't give Mallorca any time on the ball. Another chance for the Kettler there. He skies it, but it was just constant from us. Just crisp passing, good play, patient buildup moving it from side to side, switching the play when we had to. It was amazing. And the amount of passes over here you can see is just outstanding. We don't lose the ball. We're patient, calm, collected, and we create a good opportunity again. Out wide, back into the middle for De Kettler. The second half was every bit as dominant, guys. Mallorca couldn't do anything. Every time they had a counter opportunity or tried to create a chance, we cut it out, recycled play, and got chances of our own. The Kettler was immense. He turns his man here and fires it into the back of the net. 2-0, guys. And we are just flying, firing on all cylinders. And it's so good to see because when this tactic works, it works. 
it can be devastating. I encourage anyone to try this out. And late on to the game, we created even more opportunities. Coindredi came on, gets into the box, cultured finish, 3-0, guys. So beautiful, so beautiful. And the most impressive part of all this was that we didn't let up. Even when we were up, we weren't like, oh, yeah, we're up, okay. No, we pressured runners in behind constantly. This time it was saved. But all the time, we were asking questions right until the final whistle, guys. And we win this comfortably and dominantly. 3-0 against Mallorca. And it was, in a lot of respects, one of the best performances of the season. And this is what I want to see, guys. Hopefully, we can continue this form into the coming games and really climb the table. But for now, I'm just happy with this result. The stats clearly reflect how impressive this performance was, guys. 15 shots, 9.6 expected goals, the passing accuracy is there, the possession was there, and I mean, if you dive deeper into the possession stats, the heat maps, 87% possession is ridiculous. That spell to start the game was ridiculous, and we sustained the possession towards the end of the game in the 70s. It's really good, and the heat map shows we were in their final third, we were pummeling them, and Mallorca's possession heat map shows that they had big black holes, we shut them down, and in terms of regaining the possession, it was all at the halfway line. Any counters that they were trying to develop, they just got cut out right then and there, and it was so impressive, guys, and the chance creation. We had a lot of chances, but they had a big fat zero. I love looking at this, not even a blocked shot. They just didn't have any shots. It was so good. And the Kettler was central to all of this. He's quickly becoming our best player, most central player here. He did everything in this game. He was part of the buildup. He was part of the chance creation. And then he got into the box, found himself in perfect positions to get shots off. Guilamon was immense as well he's been stringing good performances guys he was orchestrating from that midfield and Boscagli as that libero role at the back was also really good this game it was just a complete performance a complete shutdown of Mallorca and dare I say the best performance of this season Barcelona was really good but the way we shut Mallorca down was just second to none this game up next, we have Granada, and this poses a very similar challenge to our last game against Mallorca because they like to play the same way without the ball. They drop back, even a little bit deeper, I'd say. However, they emphasize attacking a little bit more. Fast build-up, forward runs, they do like to get out and run, and they set up in a 4-4-2, slightly different to Mallorca. They've got two strikers now, one of them doing a mixed role. Sometimes he'll run in behind, sometimes he'll drop, but Suarez is dedicated to getting in behind. Then you've got a very attacking lineup with fullbacks bombing forward, even the central midfielder getting forward, helping out, surging in behind the striker. So it's a very much more offensively inclined system and you've got much more pacey guys. You've got Suarez as the striker, lightning quick, and you've got Martinez who looks to be the same out wide. So it's gonna be an interesting little bit of a twist, but generally speaking, you're facing the same type of thing and we just need to keep concentration and build upon that really good performance we had against Mallorca. Like I said, there will be constant rotation in that front four, this time Vega and Musa play out wide, Guiri comes in as striker. And we're going to see if we can't repeat this yet again. As I'm now accustomed to, we start this game off really well. And the first opportunity of the game actually usually creates something quite interesting. And we play it around well, out to the wing, we move it back, and it falls in the end to none other than the Kettler and... It's a ricochet, but it goes in, guys. 1-0 within the first seven minutes, and this is a perfect start. Like I said, I am used to it, but the demons did show up, and Granada took the initiative. They crossed it to the back post, and this has been a problem this season. Mamardashvili didn't cover himself in glory. He maybe could have collected it. Granada ties this game up 1-1 in the 18th minute, guys. So that's a little bit cumbersome, and we tried to remedy this. We went back onto the front foot and tried to make something happen, but Granada did really well. 
intercepting it and then look at this one pass two pass and Suarez is off to the races I am not catching up to him with Boscagli Mamardashvili comes out unfortunately it's a good chip and it is 2-1 guys we are down to Granada and this is exactly how you should counter my tactic you should play very direct and Granada to be fair did exactly that it was really good from them and the passes in behind to Pacey forwards was a big problem I was trying to deal with it but for the most part we couldn't I thought we would come out in the second half and crank it up, but Granada did really well defensively and it was really difficult to deal with these balls in behind and they started running at us and it was a little bit cumbersome for me. The central midfielder makes a really good run here and that extra man, that extra pass leads to this goal, guys. It's 3-1 and we are not dealing with Granada well at all. We are struggling and we were for most of the game, I'd say. And they created a number of chances. Again, they're just following a simple recipe. Running in behind with pace and creating opportunities. They got a really good one here. Mamardashvili had to make a save. And we were constantly in trouble like this. We really couldn't create anything. We had very limited opportunities. One of them was here. Guiri gets into a really good position and he smashes it. But against the crossbar guys and we needed a little bit of luck to get back into this game. We didn't have it. And like I said, Granada, very simple recipe. Pace in behind against this direct passing and crosses into the back post. And that's simply how you could potentially beat us. And they do it. 3-1 guys. It's not a good result. We didn't replicate our form from the Mallorca game. And it was disappointing. It was disappointing because we didn't have enough quality on the ball to keep possession enough against Granada, we didn't have the coverage at the back and we lose the game. I think the Mallorca game and this Granada game is a really interesting side-by-side -side comparison because the general tactics are the same. Now, there is a difference because Granada puts a little bit more emphasis on attack, and that was the difference because it disrupted our play. But for the most part, you saw how much chances we created in that Mallorca game. 1.6 suspected goals in this game, only 5 shots. The possession was there, but if you look at the heat map, again, not enough in their final third or in their half. There was a lot more action for us in the Mallorca game. And in terms of chance creation... It wasn't as close to the net, it wasn't as much, because we just didn't have that quality to break Granada down, and that was mostly because they disrupted our flow, because they defended a little bit better, a little bit deeper, and countered us quickly, and it just threw us off. With Getafe coming up, it's going to be an interesting test, a slightly similar one to the Granada in certain respects, because you've still got the fast buildup, the forward run, so they're going to be getting in behind, asking questions, and we have to deal with that. But without the ball, they're going to pressure on heavy touch, depth at 70, and they're going to play a high line. It's going to be in your face a little bit more and difficult to deal with. We've seen it against Sevilla, against Real Madrid. We do tend to struggle. We have to play a little bit faster, a little bit more clever. They've got those two strikers like Granada did, one getting in behind, one doing a mixed roll, sometimes linking, sometimes getting in behind. So that identity stays the same, but they have three central midfielders, none of them set to get forward. It's a very much more defensive setup. You've got CDM, CMs with high defensive awareness. Florentino is dedicated to stay back and it's going to be really difficult to play through this, especially centrally. Now, as you can see, Weigl and Maksimovic are the strong points of the team. Good interceptions, good aggression, standing tackle, defensive awareness. This is what they want to do. They want to frustrate you. They want to be a pest. And then they want to launch their counterattacks from there. So it's going to be very interesting if we can break this down. We, again, are rotating up front. This time Vega comes in at striker. Marcus Antonio on the right. And we are also going to be rotating Vas and Nandez as right back. We're going to see who plays better. Other than that... No major changes. We're going to see if we can beat Getafe. As a manager, it's your job to prepare your team for the game in training the week before and tell them what to expect. And the first few plays of the game usually tell you how it's going to go and confirm whether your pregame analysis was correct. In this case, it was. Getafe was doing a lot of 
interception stepping out aggressively and then on the attack trying to counter and we expected it and we prepared for it but they still did really well and they got a really good opportunity here Silas has to step out and make the save but if you dive deeper you can see just how aggressive Getafe were in terms of pressuring you on the ball they weren't giving me a lot of time even the center forward here you can see pressures the ball and then we move it around we play patiently like we usually do play it through the lines play it side to side and you can see the DM is right on them there's no time they're ultra aggressive again the defender steps out here when the ball comes centrally and they try to disrupt you and they did a very good job throughout especially this first half Getafe started to get a little bit more comfortable in the second half and they started to take some more risks and a really good counter opportunity here the striker gets it he lays it off for the other striker and then he crosses it to Maximovic and it's 1-0 guys and that should have really been cut out by Silicon because that was a cross really close to him but for the most part it was Maximovic making a well-timed run and a risk well worth taking and they're up 1-0 and we struggled to create quality chances it took us until the 60th minute to create a very clear one Vega makes a good run it's saved by the goalkeeper but for the most part it was Getafe who were creating the more dangerous opportunities and they were pressuring us they didn't let us breathe and Silasen was called upon to make another save and there was interceptions aggressive interceptions from Getafe leading to quality chances for them and over here they move it around well they find the open man in the box and another save from Silas and it was really difficult to deal with their in their face approach was really bothering me and I couldn't get anything going again a shot from distance here test Silas and it's another save and then a corner they pile on the pressure it's off Silasen's hand and onto the crossbar it was really really difficult to create anything and usually in games like this when you can't create normal chances you have distance shots and that's exactly what we rever reverted to Condredi gets a decent chance here but it's a little bit too little to win against a team like Getafe and they grind it out they made sure they made me uncomfortable they pressured the ball well took their chance when it came and won one no it's that simple and unfortunately we were really disappointing in this game To be completely honest, I'm a little bit worried because this drought in terms of chance creation does appear more often than I would like. 1.9 expected goals is just not good enough, guys. The possession was there for parts of the game, especially in the first half. We kept a good amount of possession. It was in semi-dangerous areas, but we lacked the imagination to make things happen. And Getafe translated their stout defense from the back line to then in the second half intercepting balls higher up the pitch and really making things dangerous they through the style created more opportunities than we did so who's to say we have the better formation the better system they got the one nil result here and that's all that matters we had maybe not a poor performance from anybody but nothing outstanding and it just wasn't good enough we lacked the cutting edge, the quality to break a team like Getafe down and that worries me sometimes because we go from really good performances to average ones to really bad ones and it's a little bit too inconsistent for me. We have to make things better in the future. All right, despite a few slightly worse results, we're still in touching distance, three or four points from that five and six spot and I feel if we just string together slightly more consistent performances we can beat out teams like Osasuna and Athletic Bilbao to these spots now we have to prove that in our next game against Elche and this is going to be very very similar to the Granada game they drop back and this time it is direct balls and long passing so it's semantics it's a little bit more direct a little bit more route one than forward runs and fast build-up play but the general idea is the same and the 4-4-2 is the same you've got those two strikers one of them getting in behind and a slight difference here is that their winger is set to stay forward and also get into behind so it falls in line with that route one approach you've got one of the central midfielders getting forward and we saw how well that worked in the Granada game and then you've got the other wingers staying wide being an outlet on the counter so it's a very counter-attacking system aimed at 
dropping back, soaking pressure, and then releasing the pressure and attacking you. So we're definitely going to have to watch out for that. Perez in the first game showed he's a really good finisher and he caused us problems when we played against Elche. Boy is another player who we have to watch out for. The strikers and the forward players have good dribbling, decent pace, and that's what's gonna hurt us potentially. So we just need to neutralize it better than we did against Granada. And I'm gonna make some interesting changes here, guys. I'm gonna give chances to Moriba, give a rest to Guilamon. I'm going to bring on Gozabales because I feel like after that last Palmas performance he deserves some playing time and every time I've subbed him in he's looked decent so here's a start for him. Marcus Antonio goes on the left, Musa comes back on the right and Vega is going to play at striker. Again I like rotating the players, seeing what works. Virman I am trying as a CDM here as that Guardiola role. Perhaps he's going to take that up. Guilamon has been excelling, but I always like to look for options. So for the most part, just an experimental squad, but the tactics and the approach is going to be very similar to the Granada game. So let's see if we can do one better and win this time. I feel like I say this all the time, but... We started the game off well, guys, and we got an early chance here. Vega gets it inside the box, he turns, and he puts it in the back of the net, guys. What a start, and I need to start keeping count of how many first chances we actually score, because I feel like it happens more often than not. But yeah, we have a really good chance, we score it, but we build from strength to strength this time. And we continue to pressure Elche, we get a really good second chance here, Soler gets it off the post, we have a rebound, it's blocked, and Moriba gets another rebound, it's blocked again. It was a good start to the game. Elche were threatening though, they weren't asleep, and they found Perez, guys, and he put in another wonderful finish. I remember in the first game he had a really good finesse shot, this time he powers it home and it's 1-1, guys. We slipped up a little bit, but we managed to come back this time. We didn't let that affect us, and we continue to have really good pressure. Vega, a clever pass here for Gozabalas, and he nets himself his first league goal, guys. A really good debut here for him. I absolutely hate when it's a lack of concentration to start the second half and that's exactly what happens here. The right mid gets it, there's no coverage, no one is running back with urgency and he puts it in for 2-2 guys. I hate when that happens. All you have to do is make sure the man is covered and run. But that's not what happens and it affected me mentally. Elche started to get a lot more chances. Steelison had to make a save. Finally, I was able to compose myself and off of a corner we moved around well, have a number of good short passes here and it ends up with Vega who makes no mistake and puts it into the back of the net for 3-2 guys and we finally rectify that horrible mistake but it's not enough because Elche had wind in their sails and they doubled down on this long ball direct passing tactic and they created some good half chances here. Steelison had to make another good save and then they have a corner and it flies in. Silison tries to come out but it's completely undecided, hesitant. Gaia clears it off the line, it comes back and Gaia clears it off the line again. What a defensive play for our little man there and we start the counter opportunity. We move it well, switch the play here, switch it again and this creates a lot of open gaps. We create a very nice clear opportunity for Solar running onto this, a powerful shot but it's saved by the goalkeeper. But going back to that opportunity, this was really close. You can see Gaia jumps as high as possible to clear this. And this is exactly why, by the way, you have a man on the post. And he did his job. But Elche were going from strength to strength. And they showed the pace and running in behind was causing us a lot of problems. I mean, does anyone want to run after him? D guys, did you eat a bag of donuts before this game? That was really close. It could have easily been 3-3. And then in the final moments of the game, we just couldn't deal with it and we didn't have the ball it's another long ball Silasen luckily bails us out and we hang on to this 3-2 win but it was not good guys there was some massive issues that quite frankly need to be addressed in the future but we got the win thank you so much for watching this episode guys if you like the content please leave a like subscribe and I will see you next time guys laters